The yurt is the basis of the people's philosophy, reflection of their worldview. It embodies the nomad's essence in a small rounded dwelling akin to the sun and moon, earth and sky. For centuries, a person who lived here saw himself as part of the universe, for whom earth was a treasure, water was gold, and cattle was wealth. The Kazakh yurt included in the UNESCO's list of intangible heritage is recognized by the world as an artistic creation, an example of steppe architecture, applied art, and painting. It is impossible to understand Kazakhs without first studying their dwelling. This is a fertile land where harmony reigns. The Kazakh yurt is made of steppe willow. There are special places where you can buy this wood. We select even pieces of wood, set fire to the dung, and when it burns completely, it leaves smoldering embers. The tree is laid at a certain height above the coals and pressed down by the load. The length of a tree is measured by a span. Under load and high temperature, the willow bends and retains its shape. Here is the kerege. This is how it bends. Uwak. The pole bends only in the upper part. Other parts of the yurt stand straight. The nomad's home withstands hurricanes, heavy rains and snowstorms while remaining warm in winter and cool in summer. This is a miniature of the universe, the house of blessings, each component of which has a special meaning. The Kazakh yurt represents the people's philosophy, their personal encyclopedia. I can disassemble this one-of-a-kind structure for each fiber and thread and tell you a lot about each detail. In addition to tangible values, there is spiritual wealth acquired by the Kazakh people through the millennia. Because the yurt is the result of a great imagination, exquisite taste and exceptional craftsmanship. This is an example of an architectural structure that reflects the cosmological theory of nomadic culture. Scientists agree that the yurt's architecture is a model of the universe. The nomad's home was referred to variously in the writings of prominent researchers. In a traditional society, names like Kazakh U, Kazakh home and Kiz U, house made of felt, were common. The yurt functioned as an observatory. The Kazakhs calculated their time and space location by looking up at the sky through the half-open Shangarak. There are many manuscripts by travelers, scientists and ethnographers who described the yurt, including Herodotus, Plano Carpini and Ibn Battuta. The remains of a yurt were discovered at the Iron Age mounds of Pazarak in Altai and Noin Ula in Mongolia. The ancient form of the yurt was discovered during excavations of the Botai town dating to the 4th, 3rd millennium BC. There are also artifacts dated back to the Bronze Age that attest to yurts mounted on wheeled platforms. The Neolithic era's historical monuments speak of the deep roots of nomads' old dwellings. The yurt's details have names that sound like human body parts. For example, the wooden component of the yurt is known as bones. The kandik or umbilical cord is located in the center of the home. The back section is called area which means back. The thigh is referred to as the jambas or side wall. This is how kerege connect to one another. We tie them in this manner. We tie them together with a ribbon called a tarnish or bandage. Tanu in Kazakh is a term that means to tie. This is how we tie it and how kerege is fixed. The yurt is comprised of four parts. The zone opposite the doors is known as tur. This is the most honorable place. The black and white color pattern of the felt carpet stretches in this area, emphasizing its specific significance. This reflects the status of a person who has gained wisdom through life experience and can resolve any dispute fairly. 
Қазақ кезіндегі төр қасиетті ұғым деп саналады. Төр is a sacred place in the Kazakh yurt. It was also associated with the concept of statehood in the Turks' ancient world view. As a result, the person who was offered a place of honor was given unique status. Who normally takes this seat? Village elders, wise men, khans, sultans, in a nutshell, those who decide people's fate. The tur belonged to the house's owner in the family. Furthermore, the Kazakhs held girls in high regard, seating them first because a girl was traditionally regarded a guest in the family. When a woman returns to her village, her father's house, there is a tradition known as Turkindu. This idea is likewise derived from the word Tur. Қазақта төркіндеу деген оғымда бар. Яғни осы төркіндеу оғымының да астары осы төр оғыммен байланыстыруға болады. A bed, linen, plates and miscellaneous utensils were put to the left of the төр. Weapons, horse equipment and clothing were hung on the right. The hearth is another area of the yurt that was considered sacred. A cauldron was set here and food was cooked. Anything made of wood, kerege, uwak, shangarak, and bosaga usually requires male power. Wool items such as tuyurluk, a felt covering dome poles, tundik, a felt covering shangarak, and baskur, patterned braid, were handmade by talented craftswomen. That is, the yurt as a living organism was created by men and women working together. In this case, we can see a link to the fertility symbol. At first look, it appears that the manufacturing and installation processes are equally distributed between men and women, but a sacred meaning related with the duality of the masculine and feminine forces is hidden here. Each part of the yurt has its own set of semantics. Hence, to the right of the tur is the male half, where the owner's equipment hangs, and to the left is the female part, where domestic utensils are kept. People occasionally confuse the male and female parts, looking at the yurt from the door. Contemporary designers refer to zoning as an innovation borrowed from Western culture. I strongly disagree. Why? Because the so-called zoning was imprinted in the minds of the nomadic people in ancient times, and it was in no way related with the rational use of space as it is now. The hierarchy and social position of each family member were essential in this situation. In the yurt, everyone had their own space. It should be noted that the right side serves as a border zone. A spot was set aside for those who, according to common belief, were on the edge of two worlds, life and death. The Kazakhs could keep young calves born during the winter season on the right side of the yurt. The newborn was first placed on the right side as well. The zone separating the worlds of the living and the dead was also meant for the dead. He was bathed for the last time here, wrapped in a white cloth and carried out of the yurt to be buried. The yurt's construction begins with the kerege or lattice base. A six-wing kerege is first fitted in a circle. And then this door is installed. Also, Arkan is hung. We take all the tapes and knot them together. Only then do we erect the Shangarak. 
both sides of the newlyweds family built the yurt intended for them, according to tradition. There is also a link with the dualism of two principles. According to ethnographers, among the Turkic Mongolian peoples, it was customary that the main part of the yurt was made by the bride's side. While the groom's side only did the door, the yurt's main constructor never built doors. Otherwise, the process as duality, which is intended to realize the relationship of two principles, would be violated. <laughs> The yurt's construction begins with a kerege, or lattice base. A six-wing kerege is first fitted in a circle, and then this door is installed. Also, arkan is hung. We take all the tapes and knot them together. Only then do we erect the shangarak. Many associate Shangarak with the concepts of home and family, the two most important values in a nomad's life. Kirege serves as a support for Wuk, in turn domed poles. Wuk support Shangarak. The entire structure is firmly interconnected. However, all parts are fastened firmly. The Shangarak acts as a solid foundation. The Kazakhs say, if the Shangarak is strong, the house will be strong too. There are many proverbs and wishes connected to the domed part of the yurt. Turks believed there is a three-dimensional space. These are the upper, middle and lower worlds. The yurt was seen as the universe, Shangarak, the upper world, Wuk, the middle world, and Kirege, the bottom world. Nurila Shahanova, a well-known ethnographer, writes on the connection of Shangarak with the women's capacity to bear children and correlation of the dome circle of the yurt with the female womb. If the children died shortly after birth, then the afterbirth was hanged on a Shangarak with seven black pebbles. This rite represented the journey of the child's spirit to the upper realm, the land of angels and birds. If the child is born healthy, the afterbirth was buried beneath the threshold. Why shashak? Multicolored woolen cords with tassels at the end were hung around the domed circle. To save from the evil eye, from all kinds of misfortunes, demons, Satan, so that peace and prosperity always reigned in the house. In a word, all these colorful ribbons attract the eye. The person who enters the house is first of all struck by beautiful ribbons. A good idea, isn't it? <laughs> the installation of Shangarak is a male function. The rest of the work is performed by women. This has its own logic. Shangarak ascends using a bakan, a long pole. Scientists observe the sacralization of actions in this process. The bakan reflects the masculine principle in this circumstance, which is why it cannot be disregarded. Bakan, bakan is used in a variety of situations. When they put up the yurt, they prop up the shangarak. It takes tremendous strength to hold the shangarak till wuk is put into its holes from all sides. The bakan can be removed once the domed poles have secured the shangarak. You can't just toss it around. Bakan is placed between two kerege and holds garments and other items. It is also known as adal bakan. <laughs> Another belief says that the bakan serves as a bridge between heaven and earth. Thus, a study of the semantics of bakans in the interior of a nomad's yurt reveals a large semantic meaning for this element. Sirik Yerghali, a culturologist, underlines the relationship between the pole in ancient mythology and the world tree by Tirik. The sacred tree mirrors the universe's structure where the roots represent the underworld, the trunk, the world of people and the crowns, the realm of spirits. And it seems to project this image on the yurt's architecture. The concept of Eol existed in the ancient Turkic language, meaning the road uniting heaven and earth. This is the road of parting words, the road along which the human spirit travels. That is how a child is born. His soul descends to earth along the world tree. A person goes to the next world along the same path. 
Bakan was used in maternity rituals. It marks the site of birth and serves as a support structure for the woman in labor. The souls of a woman and a child wander in different worlds during childbirth, according to ancient Turkic ideas. The mother in labor can be relieved of her burden only when the patroness of children, Umay Ana, descends leaning on the Bakan. Bakan can also be called Jolterik, a tree road. Souls come and go through it. Our wishes are also sent along it to higher powers and descent, which means they come true. See how it works? The Bakan supporting the Shangarak performs the role of the world tree. This is a sacred tree. That is why among the Turkic Mongolian peoples, a woman gives birth in an upright position, kneeling. As for the concept of Bakan, one should recall the existence of Adal Bakan. It is made in different ways, covered with silver, painted or ornamented with bone. As a rule, it is installed on the right side of the yurt, and on it hangs the clothes of the owner of the house as well as the amulet of grown-up daughters. Adal means pure, undefiled. Adal Bakan protects from evil spirits, they say, among the people. It is curious that the yurt can be expanded and reduced at its discretion. It is a transformer. Experts say that a small yurt can easily be expanded to a three-room dwelling. Well, the strength of the structure depends primarily on the kerege. The Kazakhs have a parting word, wuk kagaran kubisin, or they say wuk jinaran kubisin. They wish that there were many of those who could insert the domed pole into the shangarak. Therefore, wishing the family to have more sons, if they wished for the birth of a girl, then set Keregen King Sin, meaning let the Kerege expand. Kerege is a lattice frame of a yurt which is covered from the outside and from the inside with a felt made of white ship's wool of autumn shearing, which is easy to process and has a good density. Therefore, it was always warm in the house. Kiregye, lattice links that are installed from right to left. Each link consists of wood which differs in length. The longest is called Yerese. The short ones are called Saranak and Balashak. The ropes with which the doors are tied are made of camel or bull skin. Kiregye wood is collected in a rhombus pattern with each hole forming a rhombus. You've undoubtedly noticed this figure on the felt carpet's ornament, Tikimit. In the traditional sense, the rhombus represents power and patronage. The yurt is remarkable in its simplicity. It can be erected and disassembled in less than an hour. A nomad could easily transfer a yurt from place to place while traveling across the steppe in search of the best pastures, with the help of one camel and two horses. The bottom felt is raised to a height of up to one meter in the summer heat for greater ventilation of the yurt, and the camp house protects its owner from rain and wind in the winter. A steppe reed liner provides an additional insulation layer and protects the dwelling from dust. The Kazakh traditional home is not merely a transportable building that can be readily and rapidly built. Above all, proof of the ancestors' intellectual and material experience, distinctive culture and refined taste collected over the generations. This is also clear evidence that Kazakhs had understanding of astrology, arithmetic, physics and meteorology thousands of years ago. Each feature of the yurt, reflecting the people's ideology and worldview, contributes to a small representation of the universe. Because the structure is a living embodiment of the universe's rules, a place of blessings, a place for abundance, spiritual purification and peace. Thank you.